10 big goal setting mistakes business owners are making. Here are the most common mistakes business owners are making when it comes to setting goals for their business. Get ready for some mindset shifts. If you're anything like me, you've set so many goals in the past that you've lost count and most of them you haven't actually achieved. Today I'm going to share 10 reasons why goal setting hasn't worked for you. Hopefully this realization will help you to stay the course, not give up and finally achieve your goals. I'm about to bust some major myths around goal setting and you'll probably have many aha moments as you read on. And that's good because clearing the clutter from our minds is the first step to setting a new goal for our lives. My name is Kath Kyle and I'm the author of Stamp Goals book and I'm so happy that you're here. I help content creators and change makers manifest business success through spirituality, self-belief and strategy and I help you master your marketing, manifestation and money mindset. So I would love to know what are your current goals for your business? What would you love to achieve this month or this quarter or this year? Let me know by leaving a comment on my blog, YouTube channel or sending me a DM on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle. So 10 reasons why goal setting hasn't worked for you. Let me know if you recognize any of these mistakes you've been making with goal setting. I've made them all and it's just all part of the learning experience. Number one, you gave up on your goals too early. This is the number one reason that most goals are not achieved. You simply stopped working towards them and gave up. The main reason why people give up on their goals is that they thought they failed and they lost confidence in their ability to achieve their goals. How do you feel when you don't achieve your goals? Do you get disappointed? Do you swear that you'll never set another goal again as there's just no point? Believe me, I've been there myself. I gave up on goal setting for years because I had too many disappointments. Most of the time I never really took my goals seriously and they went totally out of my mind until the end of the month or the end of the year. That was until I learned the truth about goal setting and where I'd been going wrong. I'm going to help you recognize where you've been going wrong with goal setting so you can set more effective goals next time. And my aim today is to change your mindset around goal setting. You won't even see it as an issue if you don't achieve your goals as you'll still see yourself as successful. So let's start by identifying what a goal actually is. A goal is simply a thought that you had in your mind, nothing more nothing less. A goal is a desire to receive something into your life. It's often a random amount of income that you wish to receive that you just plucked randomly out of thin air. You were completely in control of your thought when you set that random goal and I want to help you realize that that same level of control over your thoughts, you can have that regardless of whether you achieve your goal or not. Changing your thoughts around whether you achieve your random goal by your self-imposed deadline makes all the difference when it comes to carrying on working towards that goal or giving up altogether. And another thing worth pointing out is that when you set a goal, there can only be two outcomes. Number one, you achieved your goal or number two, you didn't achieve your goal. It's that one phrase, I didn't, that drags us into a pit of despair. We fail to get the outcome we want and who likes to fail? Instead of using the word failure, why not reframe that into a more positive statement? Something like, I'm still working towards my goal. My goal just hasn't been realized yet. I'm curious as to whether there were any signs that I'm on the right path or whether I should change course. I've learned a lot now and now I need to switch my method of reaching my goal or my goal will happen in divine timing. Changing our goal talk, just like shifting our self talk, leads to subtle alterations of our mindset. Pivoting towards positive words and phrases helps us to move towards our goals. 
Say for example you set a goal to earn $10,000 by the end of the month and last month you earned $100 and you want to jump from earning $100 to $10,000. Say you actually ended up earning $300 by the end of the month. You could choose to see that as a total failure because you didn't hit your goal of $10,000 but let's choose to look at this again through a more positive lens. You actually trebled your earnings. Sure, you didn't 100x them but keep trebling your revenue each month and you'd overshoot your goal by month four, earning you $17,400, a lot more than your $10,000 target. So rather than getting dragged down by the negatives, look up to the positives. In fact, go further, congratulate yourself for trebling your monthly earnings and be excited that this means that what you are doing is working and you are still working towards your goal. Did you know that most businesses follow a similar pattern of growth? When you first start a new business, you usually put a lot of effort in and hardly see any results at all. Then all of a sudden something changes and your growth absolutely takes off so fast you won't even believe it. If you were to plot business growth on a chart, it would look like a hockey stick going nothing at the bottom for a long time or very little results and then all of a sudden bang it just absolutely flies and if you could see into the future and you knew that in a couple of months you'd be hitting that hockey stick of growth would it motivate you to continue yes of course it would so so what you need to do is continue working towards your goals with the same level of enthusiasm and be thankful that the hockey stick growth is inevitable for you yes inevitable and in my next content piece i am going to explain exactly why goal setting is inevitable for you so stay tuned for that one so just remember that just because you didn't hit your goal by the date that you set doesn't mean that you will never achieve your goal as long as you were constantly making progress you will hit your goal at exactly the right time when you are emotionally and energetically ready for it don't give up and you will achieve your desires here's mistake number two you were focused on the wrong goals for business have you ever set a particular goal because someone else told you it would lead to success I've done this so many times I've lost count. Every time I watched a new webinar or took a new business course, I'd get really excited about the person's results, their business model and their strategy and tactics. So I would change the way I was working and I would work really hard on each method. And I always thought if they can do it, so can I. And I was always disappointed when I either got no results or I got results for a few months and then things would level out. And then I would start working on the next business model and my previous results would fade away to nothing very quickly. I literally did this for years, getting so frustrated as to why nothing was working for me despite my hard work. It took me a really long time to realize that we need to be setting goals that are right for us as individuals and other people will never know what is right for us. So how do we know what are the right goals to set? We need to quiet our minds, ask questions, journal about it, find your deep desires and listen to the intuition that comes as a result. Only then will you know what goals are right for you when you ask questions and listen for the answers. And I will be covering this in a lot more detail later on. So here's mistake number three, you set too many goals. Have you ever read a book about self-improvement that encourages you to change everything in your life? They encourage you to set a goal to improve your finances, your work, your relationship with your spouse, your kids, your friends, your spiritual life, your fitness, your food, your health, your charitable givings and the list goes on. I've been there myself and let me tell you that all this does is totally overwhelm you. The brain works much more effectively when you focus on changing just one thing at a time and this is because the brain likes to resist change to keep you safe. 
When you try and change too much at any one time, it just becomes all too much and you give up on all of it. So start with just one goal at a time. For example, setting a growing goal first. And I go into detail about my goal setting system in my book, Stamp Goals. And when you've made changes that become habits, you can then move on and set new goals for other areas of your life. Also, when you work towards achieving just one goal, it makes you feel successful, which is fuel to drive change in other areas of your life. Here is mistake number four. You didn't believe you were capable of achieving your goals. Why is it that some people set goals and easily achieve them and others don't make any progress towards their goal at all, despite the same amount of work and effort? The answer is that the people who achieve their goals are the ones that believed they could achieve their goals and this point is absolutely critical. If you have more doubts about your goals than you have confidence in your goals, then you will not achieve your goals no matter what actions you take. Most people would agree that if someone keeps telling themselves they won't achieve something, then they simply won't achieve it. Henry Ford got it spot on when he said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And Napoleon Hill was famous for saying, whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. Does that mean that if you have a single doubt about your ability to succeed, that you are doomed to failure? Not at all, but it would be better to recognize your doubts and practice letting go of them, replacing them with more positive thoughts instead. The subconscious mind will bring about whatever you tell it. So if you are telling it both success thoughts and failure thoughts, it will be convinced by whatever has the most energy. That means that if you repeat, I will achieve my goals a thousand times each day, but carry around a constant feeling of dread about your business all day long, the subconscious mind will be convinced more of the feeling of dread than the empty words with no feelings attached to them. And that's why it's important to attach a strong feeling to your success beliefs. The more successful, happy and abundant you can feel about your business and your entire life, the more likely you are to succeed. It's totally normal to have doubts. We wouldn't be human if we didn't, but we want to do whatever we can to have more positive beliefs around our business than negative beliefs, or we will struggle to achieve our goals. And I have some fantastic tools that I have shared with you in my Stamp Goals book that will help you to let go of any doubts and fears in your mind about your business. Here's mistake number five. You asked for compensation before you made an offer. Here's a big mistake I see a lot of people making, and it's also advice that's been given out by a lot of gurus that I don't really agree with. Most business experts will tell you that the only thing you need to think about when starting a new business is making money. I believe that thinking about revenue is vital to all businesses, but it's not the only thing we need to concern ourselves with. Although mindset and belief are absolutely critical, when it comes to business, you will never make any revenue by sitting on your couch believing that it's going to happen if that's all you do. If you believe very strongly that money is going to come to you, but you don't take any further action, it might come to you as a gift by a friend or by winning a competition, but never by business revenue. And that is because the whole purpose of a business is to give people something that they want in return for money. So instead of focusing first on expecting money to pour into your business by doing nothing, you need to first be focused on what you are going to give. What value are you going to provide? How are you going to blow away your customers? What makes you different? If you don't have an answer to these questions, it's going to be difficult for you to earn any decent amount of money in your business. And I don't want this to discourage you if you're struggling to understand how you can be different from everyone else. It might be that you do just as good of a job of providing value as the competition, but perhaps you communicate that value in a better or a more interesting way. Perhaps your marketing is better so the customer understands exactly what the benefits are of working with you. 
And don't forget that you yourself are an asset. So if you have a business where you have contact with the customer, such as coaching, or you do a lot of content marketing, then your own personality is always going to be the differentiating factor because people re resonate with different people. But if you have low self-esteem, yet you bring your personality into your business with blog posts, videos, social media posts in your own voice or with some type of coaching, it is critical that you improve your own confidence before you will make any substantial amounts of money. However, some people with low confidence can set their prices very low or even free to start with and then improve their confidence by just securing one customer and you will find that you can easily raise your prices as soon as your confidence jumps to the next level. You have to start somewhere and you will get more confidence with practice. So everybody starts at the bottom so don't let this discourage you and if you're not sure of your purpose or your business idea yet, don't worry I'm going to be helping you with this later. Here's mistake number six. You focused on giving value before you got your mindset right. This is a big mistake that I made for many, many years. I have an Enneagram personality type three known as the achiever. This means that I am ultra productive and I am very good at getting many tasks done in a very efficient way. And this is a good trait to have as long as you are focused on the right tasks. For many years I listened too much to other people and focused on so many different business models and totally forgot who I was serving and why. I also forgot to listen to my own inner voice as to what was the best course of action for my business. So I had some of the right personality traits for creating a successful business. I was dedicated, consistent, hardworking, optimistic and open-minded. But what I was lacking was leadership, confidence to make my own decisions, letting go and trusting. Also, analytics and measuring were something that I didn't focus very heavily on because I was too busy working to figure out what was working and why. So it's very important to figure out what you are good at and what personality traits you still need to develop to be successful. Here are some example personality traits needed to be a successful entrepreneur. So which of these do you still need to improve? Be open-minded, stay focused, be grateful, be resilient, be analytical, be self-reliant, be confident, be driven, be passionate, be goal-oriented, be honest, be an informed risk-taker, be caring, be a good leader, be balanced, be healthy, be a good problem solver, be optimistic, be a lifelong learner, or be adaptable. Focusing on improving yourself as a person is the biggest gift you can give to your business. Once you get stronger as a person, you can take those skills into any business and make a success of anything that you set your mind to. I have a fabulous technique for improving your personality that I share with you in my Stamp Goals book. Here's mistake number seven. You didn't make goal setting a habit. How many times have you written a goal down on New Year's Day or during a course or a coaching session and then never looked at it again? I have done this so many times I've lost count. While I was moving house, I came across about 30 different journals all with different goals written in them from the last 10 years. Most of them I never looked at once I wrote them down. You get results based on what you focus on, so it stands to reason that if you don't make goal setting a habit, you won't be able to achieve your goal. Looking back at the times when I have achieved my biggest goals, I literally reviewed my goals once or twice every single day for six months or more. This is what I did with my very first business and my growth just exploded. During my, my second business, I also kept my goals top of my mind on a daily basis and kept track of how close I was to achieving my goals. What I suggest you do is write down your goal and review it twice a day. 
What I did was I put my goal statement in my bathroom and I made a habit of reading it out loud after I brushed my teeth in the morning and at night. On my goal statement, I wrote down the date that I was going to make a certain amount of money and what value I was going to provide in order to receive that money. Then I felt the feeling like I'd already achieved it. Within six months of starting my new business, I was getting over 2,000 page views per day to my website and within nine months, I was getting around 5,000 page views per day to my website. Despite me stopping working on my website while I was pregnant, my results just carried on going up and up and I show you exactly how to create your perfect goal statement later on in my Stamp Goals book. Here's mistake number eight. You didn't put goal setting first. Have you ever got to the end of a very busy day and wondered exactly what you achieved and why? That's the problem with endless to-do lists. It's very easy to add, add busy work to our to-do list that has absolutely nothing to do with achieving our goals. If one of your goals is to make revenue, and it should be, then you need to focus on making money every single day. And I call this MAST. MAST, M-A-S-T, stands for Marketing and Sales Tasks. Unless you are focusing on MAST every single day, you are not putting your revenue-based goals first. I suggest that you have more than one to-do list. One of your to-do lists is literally a brain dump. It is everything that you want to do and think you should do for your business and you can just completely ignore this list most of the time. The other to-do list is your daily to-do list and it should have no more than three main tasks on there and MAST should be one of them. Of course you can outsource MAST to someone else but someone in your business should be doing this daily and you should be planning MAST once a week. Seeing as you're in business to make money, revenue-based goals should be one of the main priorities for you at all times. You might have other big goals too, but revenue should always be one of them. And as for your other main tasks, I have a system that helps you slot the most important tasks into your day. And I can't wait to share that with you in my Stamp Goals book. Mistake number nine was you didn't have a manageable plan for achieving the goals. I'm always in two minds about the word realistic. I am not actually a big fan of the word as I feel like it limits us into thinking small and that can limit our businesses from growing too big. So what does realistic actually mean anyway? To me, it means that I'm putting a limit on what can be real in my life. I believe that my reality has no limits in terms of realizing the desires of my heart. Although I feel like we will always achieve our desires eventually, I also believe that we have to take steps towards our desires that feel manageable for us right now. One of the biggest reasons that people give up on their goals is that they set goals that were too big for them right now. They then got disappointed when they didn't achieve them straight away. How many times have you written down a goal to be a six or a seven figure business owner when you were literally earning next to nothing? People have proven that anything is literally possible and businesses can indeed reach six or seven figures in their very first year. But it does take a very confident person to carry forth this achievement. Often that person will have had success with another business or another area of their lives and they are very determined. I myself did create a six figure business in my very first year by thinking big so I do have proof that it works. But after talking to many other business owners and seeing my own results slip, I realise that your mindset has to be in exactly the right place for this to happen. Setting manageable goals means assessing your own level of confidence and meeting yourself where you are at. That doesn't mean that you don't work on improving confidence, but right now you can set goals that feel achievable yet push you slightly out of your comfort zone. 
when you start a brand new business just making any money at all is a major victory so focusing on small wins at the start can give you a huge amount of confidence you can then use that confidence to set even bigger goals that stretch you to the next level and that is what i mean by focusing on what is manageable when you set a goal to achieve seven figures have you even given any thought as to how you will actually achieve it if you set a goal to achieve seven figures in 10 years fair enough you have more than enough time to grow into the person who has the ability to earn this kind of money but if you set a goal to go from nothing to seven figures in one year for most people this is unmanageable and this is because it takes a very strong mindset and a lot of experience to run a seven figure business here are some questions that you can ask yourself to see how ready you are to set mammoth goals in one year or less. How many customers will you need to have? How much will you charge them? How will you support them all? Who will do the customer services? How will you have enough time for that amount of customers? What if they all demand support at the same time? Is your team big enough? Is your host large enough for the amount of traffic you'll get? Do you have a pot of money to support experimentation with paid ads? How will you build a big enough audience to sell that amount of products? What happens when you have a launch where you don't hit your goals by the deadline? What will you try next? How will you be resilient enough during tough times? If you have sensible answers to all of these questions and don't feel totally out of your comfort zone, then you are ready for these big type of goals. Otherwise, give yourself some grace. If you are new to the world of business, it takes some time to learn all of these skills. You can learn them faster than you think possible, but you need to learn the skills at some point. Often the best way to learn is through trial and error, but it's better to learn fast so you can figure out what doesn't work and keep trying new things until you learn what does work. And when you figure out what does work, do more of this over and over again and you will keep growing. Here's mistake number 10. You tried to achieve your goal without any support. Being an entrepreneur is the ultimate self-development program. You need to develop so many different skills and it can be really tough to keep motivated when things don't work out as planned. Having a support system in place is crucial so you have someone who can encourage you to keep going. Do you have a supportive partner or other family members? A business coach is the best option for support in business, but if you can't afford a coach right now, why not try swapping services with somebody? You can coach somebody and then they can coach you for free, or they coach you and you offer them a different service. I've done this a lot myself. How about joining a membership or a group coaching program as they can be a lot more affordable? Even finding a supportive Facebook group is better than nothing, but having people you actually have a conversation with is so much better. When I had a coach, I was really on fire as I felt like I'd made an investment in myself and I would be wasting the money if I didn't use that time to really work on achieving my goals and pushing myself out of my comfort zone. This was the period of time when I started making videos for the first time. Before that, I hated being on camera and just having the support of my coach really made it easy for me to experiment with new things. You can also find an accountability partner to keep you accountable to achieving your goals and you can find a free accountability partner in my community which is available to everyone who has purchased a copy of my book, Stamp Goals, or bought any of my other products. And there's a post in there that you can request an accountability partner and join up with somebody else to support each other in business because it's so important. So now that you have learned how to avoid the most common business goal setting mistakes, you might be wondering how you can set your goals and actually achieve them. And that is what my whole Stamp Goals book is all about. It is like a course in a book. So you will be walking through a series of action steps that will lead you to success in your business. 
To get hold of my book, you can click the link below to read more about it, get the fabulous bonuses that I'm giving to anyone who purchases my book, and get the link to both my Kindle and my paperback books on Amazon. So you can click the link surrounding this content piece or go to kathkyle.com forward slash stamp goals. And next time I'm going to be sharing why goal achievement is actually inevitable for you. So make sure you subscribe to my podcast, Manifest Business Success, my YouTube channel, Kath Kyle, and follow me on Instagram at Kath underscore Kyle so you don't miss that. And while you're waiting for your copy of Stamp Goals book to arrive, you can start taking practical action in your business today. Go and watch my free business goal setting workshop for fast results, where I show you exactly how to set three essential goals that will get you results within one month. Boost your confidence, feel like a winner and attract more success to you by achieving your goals every time. This free workshop and associated workbook is part of my book bonus bundle for stamp goals and I'm only making this workshop and workbook free for a limited time. So grab that while it's still available and you can click the link surrounding this content or go to kathkyle.com forward slash goals workshop and you are going to be so glad that you did. Now it's your turn to go and put your stamp on the world.